Hi everybody, Drill Ninja Casey here, and Jezza has done it again. He's done it again because he's put himself on the scope of my radar. How did he do that? Well... Now this video is about Jazza, but it's also about ZHC. Particularly Jazza's video exposing ZHC. Now this video, I have to admit, was one of his better videos. But it took me about, I would say a good month before I watched it because I honestly thought it was a clickbait video because I know that he knows ZHC, I know that they're friends, and I'm figuring this was just some kind of clickbait video. But it, it really wasn't a clickbait video because he really went in on ZHC and that's what I appreciated about it. But why did he make a video? Basically just kind of slapping his friend's hand for not being the type of YouTuber that Jazzy is or for not being a truthful YouTuber and faking this, faking that, you know, being dishonest about this, being truthful about that. And like I said, one of his better videos and before you watch this video, I'm telling you to check out Jazz's video. I'm going to put a link right here. Okay, see that link right there? Use that to check out Jazz's video exposing ZHC before you watch my video, which is exposing Jazz's exposing ZHC video. That's what this one is going to be called. And you know that because you saw the thumbnail. Now, let's get into our boy Jazz. Okay, now the video starts out very quiet and he makes a joke about spilling the tea, which goes into the rest of the video because he's basically spilling the tea about ZHC. I thought that was very clever. Okay, but my first thought was okay, why would you make such a video? Would it be for views? Is it jealousy? I mean, or do you really in your heart think that people need to know or know your feelings about ZHC and how he is uh, running his channel? I have my own conclusion about why he did it, but I'm going to give you more in-depth detail into my thought process along his video. So here we go. When I first started my YouTube channel, Jazz was actually one of my first channels that I subscribed to. Do you know who was the first channel that I subscribed to? ZHC. Somehow <laughs> I knew this guy would just blow up, right? He was at the time he was at 20,000 subscribers. So um, that was huge. And uh, at the same time, Jazza was at, I think, going, going on to 3 million. So Jazza was kind of like an OG art YouTuber. And over the months and years that passed, you see Jazza slowly got more subscribers, but ZAC just exploded, like, you know, millions of subscribers, which, you know, just really overran Jazza so fast that his whole channel spun, okay? And the, the thing is, how, how did that happen? Like, you know, how does an uh, OG YouTuber who's been doing this for like maybe five to seven years get taken over by a guy who just came out of nowhere? Right? How does it happen? Well, for me, I believe it is because of the engine. And when I say engine, I mean the people, the network, and, and things like that that ZAC has behind them. It's the same company that also um, is the engine behind Mr. Beast. So you can kind of see the comparison there. Right? But I don't think Jazza has an engine behind him. I think Jazza's channel was built by Jazza, not a uh, management company that he hired or anything like that. I think video by video, Jazza built his own channel. And I would imagine it's okay to be, you know, jealous and maybe even a little frustrated with being on YouTube for so many years and then have somebody who's been on YouTube for like not even half the time you've been on YouTube and just totally annihilates the numbers in terms of subscribers. And you may wonder, what is it you're doing wrong? What is it you're doing right? Not only that, you may try to figure out ways to use that particular person to gain more subscribers for you or more views for you, which is what I think is happening right here, okay? Without a doubt, ZHC is a great artist. 
But in my opinion, nowhere near as good as Jazz. I'm just going to put that out there right now. All right? ZSC is what they call... Uh, okay. Again, I really like this guy. But he's a one-trick pony. He can do uh, comic book art really well. But Jazz can do all kinds of arts really well. So if you kind of wait it too, you know, you have the one-trick pony and you have the pony who can do many tricks. <laughs> So we have two ponies in the race, but I think Jazza, Jazza is the prettier pony because he has a wider range of talent than ZAC. So if you had a competition between ZAC and Jazza in, in comic book art, ZAC would definitely take him out, right? For sure. We, I guess we can all agree on that. But if you had a competition between ZAC and Jazza with various arts, Jazza is taking him out. All right, so can we just agree on this? All right, good. Back to the reason he made the video. Now, this is one of his most viewed videos, which in, in my mind makes me believe using the name of ZSC also helps you get views. Just like using the name of Jazza would also get you views. But the underlying message in this video exposing GST um, that Jazz made is that this guy is great, uh, a great artist. He's doing great. He's doing really good moves towards growing his channel. But is it costing him basically his soul? And I'm saying that because there's certain things that Jazz mentioned in the video that um, alluded to the fact that ZAC was being dishonest about certain things on his channel, which led to more views and led to more subscribers. There are a couple things that he did mention that even I, you know, thought about before watching Jazz's video that I thought was, you know, a little shady. Starting off with the injury, there was an incident. Unfortunately, Zach had a serious injury. Right when he hit around 100,000 subscribers, he got carpal tunnel. He probably didn't have carpal tunnel syndrome. He could no longer draw. And an emotional video where he announced via the title, Why I Quit, Every Artist's Worst Nightmare. He probably didn't have carpal tunnel syndrome. Except later in the video when he seems very uninjured and very YouTuber-y and not very sad. Did you guys read the title? Well, it's true, I quit. I quit making excuses! Let's go! He probably didn't have carpal tunnel syndrome. It threw me off so much that I found myself researching carpal tunnel while watching these videos to verify the, the legitimacy of his claim. But it otherwise seems to be non-existent far too much of the content that heavily relies on the use of flexation of his wrist for me to totally buy the level of injury he's claiming. He probably didn't have carpal tunnel syndrome. Especially in the very emotional video talking about his injury. Okay, for the record, I never bought the whole carpal tunnel syndrome thingy. I, I never bought it. I just thought that was a play for sympathy and he got the subscriber sympathy and views and things like that. But what I did buy, and not that he sold it, but I did buy the the fact that in in doing comic art, ZHC realized, or maybe his engine realized, that you know, comic book art is, is a niche and if you really want to expand and grow to where you um, make a ton of money and get a uh, million, million, millions of views on your video, you're going to have to kind of step out of just doing comic art and do other things. And I think that's where ZAC started to just grow because he didn't just stay with comic art. He used comic art to just expand into other things and then he started customizing which was a huge deal because when he started customizing, customizing was a big thing back then but then his customizations got bigger and bigger and bigger. So that helped to move away from the niche of just doing comic art and it worked because he you know, expanded into a whole bunch of different things with doing art challenges and competitions and, and crazy giveaways for money. And, you know, the giveaways being an, another thing that he really just got into and really irked Jazza because uh, Jazza tried doing giveaways and it, it really, it worked out. According to Jazza, it worked out for him the way he thought it would. It got more views, but... 
as he says, uh, the last remaining piece of tech that I said that I'd give away that I sort of gave up by that point. Not because it wasn't working. And in fact, I was getting quadruple the comments on the content that I was putting out and running these giveaways, hiding Amazon gift codes. But I could feel my community disappearing as I was doing it. The comments were transforming from interesting and fun observations or challenging ideas or criticisms or compliments into free stuff, please. Every comment was, I want the thing and that is kind of yuck like when you're trying to build an audience and a community when you're trying to provide content that people are entertained by and the outcome is people just want stuff from you as a creative person it feels kind of gross like it feels like well that's not what I actually want to do I don't want attention for the sake of attention I want you to care about what I care about and what I'm working really hard on so you can be entertained and inspired about that thing, not about getting stuff. So what it basically comes down to is, what do you want your channel to be about? And I think that this is the message, one of the underlying messages in Jazz's video. What do you want your channel to be about? Because Jazz is an artist. He is an artist. He loves art. Like, that's his passion and you can tell. Okay? so. Not only is that his passion, teaching art to others also his passion. So when you want that for your channel and, and you kind of groove yourself into that niche, then that's the audience you're going to get and that's Jazz's audience. Okay? Now ZAC, his audience are more other people. Yes, they're artists. Or they started out being artists. All right? Because on my channel, um, when I talk about... ZHC, they always say, well, he sucks because he doesn't do art anymore and this and that and so on and so forth. But the idea behind ZHC is to be a big YouTuber so that he can have revenue in order to make better videos and also make enough money to give to help other people and, you know, give away money and buy people cars who need it and buy people houses who need it, which is not a bad thing, okay? But I don't think he ever came and onto the scene and said, okay, I have this passion for art, which he did, but I have this passion for art and that's going to be my driving force behind my channel. No. He wanted to make a big YouTube channel, which he did, a huge YouTube channel, a whole lot of followers, a whole lot of views all the time, and with the engine that he has behind him, he was able to do that, accomplishing his dreams. So I think that what he is doing, honestly, is what he wants to do. Getting there, now where the problem comes in, getting there seems to have been the problem. Like, how he got there. Was he being honest about certain things that he did? Was he being dishonest about certain things that he did? And, you know, I can say, having watched a lot of Jazz's video, he's one of the most trusted YouTubers that I know. Like, or that I know of. I don't say that I know, because I don't know Jazz. But if I knew Jazz, he'd probably be a really trustworthy person. The idea is, what do you want for your channel, okay? Jazza no noticed that a lot of the times when he was doing giveaways, the comments, like he said, was just more gimme, 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 gimme. Whereas the same thing happened with ZHC. Subscribe! And, and you can win also this money. You can win also these gadgets and stuff like that. And that worked for him to grow his channel because then his audience became gimme, 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 gimme. Now, nothing wrong with that. I've done giveaways. Okay, I'll be, I'll be honest. I encourage the gimme, gimme, gimme because I'm like, okay, if you want this, make a comment and you can possibly win it. So I don't mind people asking for stuff because, you know, Closed mouths don't get fed. So you have to ask if you want something. And that's okay. And I like giving to people. And so does ZSC. He likes giving to people. I think Jazza may have misunderstood um, his, his motives. Yes, giveaways does grow your channel. Yes, giveaways does make people um, want to join your channel to get more stuff. But it's also a reflection of who you are. Like, if you're a giver, you're always going to have stuff because you give away and then you make more room for more stuff. All right? Like, that's my philosophy on it. So, if you're giving things to people and it's ultimately making them happy and they subscribe because of that, I think you're 
right his reign. I think you're good to go. I never faulted ZHC for that. Even if he does it for his own selfish reasons to Gore's channel, there's tons of people who are happy because he gave them stuff. Okay? So, I don't see anything wrong with that. The, the, the point that I think Jazz is trying to make is that, okay, do all your stuff. Do your giveaways, whatever. Don't do clickbait. You know, do it the right way. But, again, what are we talking about here? Some people need something exciting in order to click. Now, ZHC is at the point in his career where anything he puts out, somebody will watch because ZHC put it out. And that's where he worked to get. If you work hard enough to get there, nothing wrong with that because that's the goal. Now you're not just an art niche. Now your niche is more universal, kind of like Mr. Beast. Now, no matter how Jazza exclaimed that it wasn't really like negative energy that he was sending ZHC's ways. I did detect there was a little bit of hate. And look, man, it's human to be jealous. All right? That's that's cool. You guys are both art YouTubers. He passed you in subscribers. I mean, it's okay to be annoyed at that because you've put in all the work. But, you know, you guys have different audiences. And that's where everything makes the difference. Right? Your audience will never like ZAC better than they like you. It just, you know, and this, I'm speaking to Jazza right now, and vice versa. Or maybe some of ZAC's audience like you, but they're just his audience too. But you have a core, solid audience, Jazza. I'm talking to you, Jazza. You have a core, solid audience that will be with you always, support you, you know, when you don't even give them anything material, but what you give them is something much more. Okay, and you give them knowledge, you give them entertainment, you give them all these things that, that are substantial. That's your niche, that's your audience. But ZAC is going for a wider audience. He even calls himself the art, the art Mr. Beast, is that what he's calling? Because that's, that's his goal. Although I know you weren't throwing shade ZHC's way. You can't really blame him for doing what he is doing in order to achieve his goal. Could he have been a little bit more honest about stuff? He probably didn't have carpal tunnel syndrome. Maybe, maybe. But would that have gotten him his goal? <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. But there is one thing that I must say about Jazza that I can't always say about any other artist. And he said it best himself. I'm always going to do odd. And so it's going to be awesome. This is Draw Ninja Casey saying, I'll see you next time. Wow!